cognitive distortions are irrational thoughts that prevent us from seeing what is really there. They stop us from really viewing reality correctly. And they can actually become so intrusive and so well conditioned and like the default thought pattern in your brain that they can lead you to act in ways that will drive your partner away from you. So cognitive distortions are really um, maladaptive. They, they help us drive away the very people we are trying to be closest to. They're irrational thoughts that make us behave in ways we don't wanna behave and it can have really devastating results on a relationship. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. What are cognitive distortions and what do you do about them if you have them? So I'm Rachel Sloan and I help anxious people save their marriages by dealing with intrusive thoughts, by getting rid of cognitive distortions, which if you know the right way to do it can actually be done really, really quickly. In just like 30 days, four to six weeks, you can abolish all the cognitive distortions about your relationship. <coughs> Excuse me, I am recovering from a little cold here. So let's jump in and let's talk about what cognitive distortions really are and what you can do about them. So like I said before, cognitive distortions are irrational thought patterns, right? They are thoughts that are not true. They are not accurate representations of reality. So where do these cognitive distortions come from? Why do you have them? They are actually an adaptive response. There's a, there's a lot of theories in psychology about where cognitive distortions come from. And the most popular one is that they're actually a way to deal with stress or to cope with an adverse or especially painful event or incidents in your life. Um, so it's just a, it's a way your brain is trying to protect you in a way from being hurt in the future. So cognitive distortions about relationships might include overgeneralized thoughts like I've been cheated on before, so of course my next partner is going to cheat on me. Right? And you can see how even though this is generalizing, we're extrapolating from one incident, one thing that happened to you, and imagining that now it's going to happen in every relationship you have, if we look at that objectively, it's not rational, it doesn't make sense, it doesn't follow that one person's actions predict what every other person is going to do in relation to you. But you can see how the brain is trying to protect you. You've been hurt very badly in the past, and so it's trying to defend you, protect you from making similar mistakes again. The problem is that this actually really tends to backfire because you make this assumption that you're going to be hurt in the future. And so you act in ways that push your partner away from you. You get jealous, you get obsessive about what they do and where they are and checking up on them. You don't trust them and you end up undermining and sabotaging the very relationship that you're wanting to protect. So your brain's trying to help you. It's trying to say, oh, well, you've been cheated on before, so be careful, don't get hurt like that. But that drives you to behave in ways that actually lead to you getting hurt, that lead to that relationship not being successful. So understanding and identifying the cognitive distortions that you have in your relationship will help you understand some of your anxieties in your relationship, and you can get a control, get a handle on these cognitive distortions so that they don't lead to self-sabotaging and relationship sabotaging behaviors. So I'm gonna give you just a few examples of really common cognitive distortions that people experience in a marriage or in relationships. So the cheating on one is very common. There's also thoughts like, you know, my last partner left me with no warning. There must be something wrong with me. I know you're going to leave me too. Right? I've been abandoned before, and this might not even be like my last partner left me, this might be my father left me, my mother left me, a friend abandoned me, somebody who was important to you walked out of your life with no explanation. So now you assume I'm the problem. They left because there's something wrong with me. Everyone's gonna leave me, you're gonna leave me. You get this fear of abandonment coming from this overgeneralization. You're generalizing, extrapolating from one incident in your life and assuming it's gonna continue to happen to you. Another one, the cheating one again, men are all cheaters, it's just their nature. This is something women like to pretend is true, right? We have this cultural generalization about the role of men versus women in a relationship. And if you wanna go for the guys out there the other way, um, women are all crazy. That's one we hear a lot too, right? As our kind of societal 
cultural distortion in relationships. Men are cheaters, they're never faithful, women are all nuts, right? These are, they sound silly if you really think about them, you know they're not true, but these beliefs get repeated over and over and we do internalize them. And that leads to an emotional response, which leads to behavioral changes, which leads to actions that make it really hard to have a healthy relationship. Uh, another common cognitive distortion in relationships is that women are more emotional than men, so the two can never communicate clearly. Uh, but any of these cognitive distortions, any of these overgeneralized beliefs, actually prevent you from seeing what's really going on. If you just assume that men are all cheaters, so of course this guy's gonna cheat on me, or I've always been left before, I'm gonna be abandoned in the future, you actually can't see the truth of what's going on in front of you. And when I say you can't see it, I mean you literally can't see it because brains are crazy and powerful and they love to look for evidence that supports what they currently believe. So when you hold a belief and you repeat it to yourself and you hang on to it and you believe it's true, you kind of like self-indoctrinate some of these beliefs. Like, well, my father left when I was little, so I have this fear of abandonment, right? I'm an anxious person now. I just am afraid of abandonment. We, we say it as though it's like this unchangeable, unmutable fact about ourselves. I have a fear of abandonment. Something I have, I can't do anything about. It's part of who I am. When we talk to ourselves like this, the brain listens to you. Your brain is listening to itself, it's listening to your thoughts, it's listening to the words you say to other people. And it believes what you tell it. Your brain is kind of as powerful and strong as it is. In some ways, it's like a small child and you're the parent. And your brain just believes what you say without questioning. It's like, oh, well, Rachel said we have this fear of abandonment, so I have to look for evidence that there's this fear of abandonment, or all men are cheaters. Okay, well, that's just true. Even though you know logically on some level that this isn't true, when you tell yourself it over and over again, the part of your brain that looks around you, and looks for evidence to make sense of the world, that processes sensory information, it takes that statement, men are all cheaters, or I have a fear of abandonment, at face value, it just assumes it's true. And so as you go through your life, all kinds of sensory information is coming in all the time. Your brain has to sort that and make sense of it and kind of craft a reality that's logical and reasonable and makes sense to you. And so the filters that it uses to interpret that sensory information and decide what to look at, what to ignore, what to deal with, it uses, as those filters, it uses your belief system. So men are all cheaters it's gonna look for all this evidence that men are all cheaters. It's going to notice that in movies, talking to your friends, it's gonna discount any evidence that men are good. It's gonna discount any stories of faithful men, any healthy relationships amongst your friends because that doesn't fit with your filter. Your filter is all men are cheaters. So when it sees evidence that contradicts that filter, it's gonna like disregard it. It's not really gonna look at it. You literally blind yourself to seeing evidence that contradicts your own beliefs. And guys, that's just as an interesting aside, this totally happens with our political and religious beliefs too, which is why it can be so hard for two sides to connect and see each other's point of view. Your brain is like literally resistant to seeing, to allowing the fact that that alternate side, that there is any evidence, it doesn't even want that to exist. So I think one of the most important things to pull out of this is that your brain hears you when you're talking, right? It's like that little kid who thinks you know everything and hasn't realized that you've been lying about Santa Claus all this time, right? It, it doesn't matter if you've lied to it before, it doesn't know, it's like naive and trusting. So if you want to stop these cognitive distortions from sabotaging your relationships, if you want to have healthier relationships, the first thing you have to do is be really careful about how you talk to yourself and how you talk to other people. Because it doesn't matter if I'm having a thought in my brain, it's like, oh, you know, I've been left before, I know he's gonna leave me, I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. It doesn't matter if I'm saying that to myself, or to my therapist, or to my friend. Whether it's an internal thought, or something I'm actually speaking, my brain is paying attention, my brain is listening. So, words that you should never use are words like never, can't, have to, I have to, I shouldn't, he always, they always, right? Any of these absolute terms 
you should eliminate them from your vocabulary because your brain hears you. When you say men always cheat, you don't mean men always cheat, right? You don't literally mean every man all the time in the whole history of the world has always cheated and always will. Your brain doesn't know that. It hears that word always, and that is the filter it's now applying to your view of the world. When you say, I can't do this, your brain just like rolls over on its back and puts its feet in the air and is like, oh my God, I can't do this, right? It, does, it stops trying. It believes you. And so it doesn't matter who you're talking to, whether you're talking to yourself or to somebody else. Eliminate these words. Never say it's impossible. Never say I have to do this. Never say I can't. And here I am saying never, right? But start to pay attention to these words in your language. Start to notice what you're telling your brain and ask yourself, gosh, if my brain takes this literally, if it thinks, you know, um, women always leave, right? Women always fall in love with somebody else. If it thinks men are all cheaters, if it thinks I'll never be good enough, I'll never find the one, right? Or it thinks I have to stay in this relationship even though I'm unhappy because I'll never find anyone else. Whenever you catch yourself saying things like this to yourself or to someone else, stop and ask, like, what if, if my brain takes me seriously, if it believes literally what I said is true, what implications does that have for me? How is that going to affect the way I see the world? And do I want to see the world that way? Right? Do I want to believe that all men are always cheaters, that women always leave me, that I have to stay in this relationship, that I have no choice, that I am never going to meet the right one, that it's too late. Right? Do I want to see the world through that filter? So start questioning yourself and start questioning your friends when they use this language too, because most people don't understand how literal your brain is. It doesn't interpret these, these words as always, as never in degrees. It just takes it at face value. It's like, yeah, okay, we can't do that. We'll never be good enough. I'll never find that right person. Your brain just like gives up, throws its feet up in the air, right? And that's what leads to a lot of anxiety, a lot of despair and overwhelm, right? All these emotions that you don't want to have in your romantic life come from these kinds of thoughts, which lead to these bigger overgeneralized cognitive distortions in the way you see the world. So Start questioning the way you talk to yourself. Start being really vigilant and really careful about the language you use. And the other thing you can do is give your brain a job to do. Brains love problems. They love to answer questions. So instead of letting your brain spiral off into how you're always gonna be alone and you have this fear of abandonment, so no matter how good your partner is, you're just never really gonna be able to trust that he's gonna stay with you because of all these things that have happened in the past. Instead of just like going down that rabbit hole of spiraling thoughts, of cognitive distortions, right? Instead of letting your brain do that, hit the brakes and ask it a question. Ask your brain to find evidence that the opposite is true. And then shut up and see what comes up for you. Like really ask your brain, say, what find evidence, what evidence can you find that I don't always get abandoned by the people I love? What evidence can you find that men aren't always cheaters? What evidence can you find that women aren't all crazy? Right? What evidence can you find that I am good enough for my partner? What evidence can you find that this is the one, that this is the person I wanna be with? And be aggressive. Don't let your brain like do that thing where it rolls over and it's like, I don't know, right? Be aggressive with this. Don't take there's no answer or I don't know, right? Insist that your brain figure this out because it can. And if you don't, you have to, you have to push it, but you also have to be quiet. Like ask that question, intend absolutely to find an answer, even if you don't believe there is one, and then be still and see what comes up for you. You might find that journaling is a really useful way to do this exercise. Write down the question for yourself. What evidence is there that I don't always get abandoned by the people I love? What evidence is there that I am good enough for my husband? And then just wait, and see what comes up and write down whatever comes to your mind. You'll be surprised. Your brain is so good at finding evidence when you ask it to. The problem is 
that up until now, you've only been asking it to find evidence of your cognitive distortions. You've only been asking it to find evidence that men are all cheaters, that women are all crazy, that men and women can't connect emotionally, that this person isn't the right one for you, that, that this isn't true love, that you have to stay in this relationship. Whatever your cognitive distortion is, whatever form those intrusive spiraling thoughts take in your brain, that's the only evidence you've been asking yourself to look for. So change things up. Start looking for evidence that something else is true. Start looking for evidence that you're wrong, that this belief you've been holding on to isn't right. right? Open yourself up to that idea. Okay, guys, I want to just do a quick little recap about what cognitive distortions are. So in the most simple, simple definition, cognitive distortions are a bad habit of overgeneralizing. That's it. It's just a habit you learned, right? To protect yourself from trauma or stress or even from just discomfort or something new. And like any habit, you can change this one, right? You can retrain your brain with a little practice to think differently and to let go of these overgeneralized intrusive thoughts that are leading you to sabotage your relationships. So to stop cognitive distortions from ruining your marriage or ruining your romantic relationships, start by practicing two things. First, eliminate words like can't, always, never, impossible, have to from your vocabulary. Start checking yourself. Use language correctly. Say what you actually mean because your brain is always listening to you. And two, task your brain with noticing evidence for the other side. Like It's kind of like you are a lawyer in court or even um, maybe you were on the high school debate team or something, right? Where you were given a side to argue and it didn't really matter if you believed that that side was right or not. Your job is to argue, to look for evidence and argue the case for that side. Pretend you're in a high school debate. Pretend you're in a courthouse. Pretend you are arguing for the other side. You have spent so much time and energy presenting the case for the prosecution. Well, now the defense gets its voice, right? Your job is to go out, find the evidence, argue the case for the defense. Look at both sides, right? You've only been looking at one, and one side can make a great case until you start looking at the evidence on the other side, right? That's what gives you the full picture of what's going on. And that's how you want to start looking at your life, looking at your partner, looking at your relationships. It's from both sides, so you get the full picture of what is really happening and not just this one-sided blinders on view from the prosecution, right? So guys, those are cognitive distortions. I hope that this was helpful and that you have a better sense of what they are and how to recognize them in your own brain and how to deal with them. Because cognitive distortions will ruin your relationships if you let them. They can totally undermine your marriage. They can undermine the good things that you want for yourself and for your partner but they're not really that big a deal. They are just overgeneralized, intrusive thoughts that we let run wild and that we encourage with our language and the way we talk to ourselves. So as powerful as these can be if you don't deal with them, they are actually something that you can deal with quite handily. So I would love to hear about what your cognitive distortions are and how you're gonna manage them. Please uh, leave me a note in the comments and I will see you guys again this evening. All right. Thanks for joining me.